All right, so I've taken off the belt, and let's, let's look at it here. So our belt, I'm going to walk closer to the camera, looks like this. So it's a very nice quality leather belt. In fact, I would dare say an excellent quality leather belt. Uh, they'll come in whatever size you are. They'll be custom fitted. I got a 36, even though right now my waist is a 34. I'm working on that, but uh, it fits great. I am not recommending that you get a belt size larger than you actually wear, but don't get one smaller than you actually wear. Make sure you get one that's actually just your right size. So the sword fits into these metal clips and the belt comes with more metal clips you can add. I saw no reason to do that. And it's got, as you can see, a tab right here that will help hold the belt down. So when you, when you take it out, you pop that out and drop the belt or drop the sword from the belt. So uh, even though, as you saw earlier, it'll fit in your belt loop, I'm not going to bother with that right now. I'm just going to put this thing on and we'll work a little bit on some deployment. So you just pop it on there, hold it down, and boom, there's your, there's your sword that you've got. Like I said, I didn't bother to put it in the, in the loops because whatever, it does the same thing. But as you can see, ah, that's a little, a little weird, but as you can see, it looks like a belt because it's a belt. It does stick out a little bit right here, but no one's ever commented on that, so I think it's not too significant. To deploy the weapon, you've got a couple options, but I'm gonna, that tab is right here. I pop it out of the tab, right? The sword pops out like that, and then all you do is pull it out. That's it, that's it. Now, that time I pulled it out with this hand, so you could do a cross body cut, you could do an uppercut, you could punch somebody with it. You have a lot of deployment options, but all of a sudden you've got a sword in your hand. It can be done with two hands, the, the grip is big enough that if you want to do that, you could. So you could fight that way if you wanted to, and, and do any, any kind of motion that you would like, depending on how you, how you feel and how saucy you feel that day. Anyway though, I do think this takes a little bit of practice to get the deployment right, to get the feel of the movement right, and to sort of decide how you want to use the weapon. You know, but I think, that, I think that it has a lot of benefit and a lot of positive things that you can do and a lot of nice motions that you can follow through with with the, with the sword. You can do stabbing motions, cutting motions, defensive motions, punching, cutting, popping. Right, So you can do closer range, you can do longer range, anything you want, whatever sword methodology you like. Uh, it doesn't have to be complicated. I see our base movements again as uppercuts in a figure eight, which of course goes to downward cuts in a figure eight. Stabbing, defending, punching, punching, punching with the butt. I don't see a reason to do a whole lot more than that, to be perfectly honest. Really that figure eight is gonna be our key thing while we're creating space away from somebody or figure eighting down, the diagonals, which are just taking a figure eight and cutting it in half. Nothing too crazy with it. Uh, and even if you don't sharpen it, it's still a big hunk of metal. It's gonna hurt somebody if you smack him in the neck with it. So I see this as a pretty awesome thing. I was talking, talking with the owner of the company. He talks about this being a revolution of, of bringing swordsmanship back. Uh, and I think, I think he's got a pretty, pretty valid point there. This is a great weapon to carry around that uh, you can use as a non-lethal weapon if you don't sharpen it or if you get the baton that you can use. It could be a lethal weapon, but it could be a defensive weapon. Uh, it doesn't go bang. So that's just benefits to that. It doesn't run out of ammunition and you can carry it anywhere. So that's kind of nice. Now back to the actual equipment itself. Our next deployment could be Right, so I take it off and I'm just going to slide it into there. I'm trying, to, trying to get it so you can see how it slides in. And you just slide it into the, into the holes there. Pulling it up makes it a bit more complicated than it actually is. And that's, that's where it fits in, right? And we just, we just put the belt back on. Now for our next possible deployment, and I put it there, and again, I'm not going to bother putting it in the belt loops just, just to save time. It'll go. It just takes longer. So from here, get my sweater out of the, out of the belt. From here, could we decide to do 
a same sided deployment. So the same thing, right? You pop it out of the tab, it's in this hand, boom, and you've got an uppercut here that you could then fight with it this way, which I think is more, the times that you might do that would be to change hands where you couldn't get a hold of your other hand. Uh, I think the time, I think this kind of a, a, a use of the weapon, I think is more for people that like to watch a lot of TV than actually want to fight with it, but hey, whatever makes you feel saucy, that's an option. You can, you can do that. Or if this hand was in some fashion disabled, or, or maybe this hand you wanted to, I don't know, had your cup of coffee or your latte or something, and you're like, I'm not going to drop my latte for this guy. Whatever. You know, the world is your oyster. You do your thing. So let's put this back in here. Once again, demo how to do that. It's not rocket science. Uh, although I think the design of this is pretty ingenious because it's simple but works really well. Another possibility for deployment. Of course, you've got your uppercut motion and you've got your reverse hand motion. Um, you can also just punch somebody with it, right? So 